and uh, welcome everyone. In this next hour, we will learn the scientific highlights of the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health, which will be held next month during 11th to 14th October 2017 in Guadalajara in Mexico. The conference theme could not have been uh, you know, more bang on spot, accelerating towards elimination. As we know, governments have committed to end tuberculosis by 2030 from this planet. Let me remind all journalists and other participants in this webinar as well as those who are watching the webinar stream on YouTube or listen to the podcast later, please note in the case of the, this conference, the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health, as with most scientific or medical conferences, all conference abstracts are released to media under a strict embargo policy. For further details on the scientific content, please contact Joe Waters from the communications team at the Union. Her email is on your screen. And for more details, check out the web link or URL displayed on your screen or write to Joe uh, on the email provided. And without any further ado, let me welcome today's webinar moderator, senior journalist, and award-winning uh, person, Ashok Ramsarup. He is uh, based in Durban, South Africa, with over 40 years of rich experience in journalism. Uh, he was the senior producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation, or SCPC. Over to you, Ashok Bhai. A warm greetings from the port city of Durban in South Africa. Welcome to this exciting webinar where we will learn key highlights of the science that will be presented by researchers and other experts next month at the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health in Guadalajara, Mexico. As we know, the Union World Conferences on Lung Health every year features latest updates on several lung health issues such as tuberculosis or TB, drug resistance, new diagnostics, drugs and vaccines, operational researchers, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, childhood pneumonia, tobacco control, non-communicable diseases, NCDs, and a lot more. In 2009, CNS correspondence team provided thematic coverage at the 2009 World Conference on Lung Health in Mexico. And one of the emerging news was that 2010 got declared as Year of the Lungs. This was because a major media forgot the lungs in a series on vital human organs. Imagine, lungs that help us breathe are so vital for life. So 2010 was the year declared Year of the Lungs. This year in 2017, the Union World Conference on Lung Health is back in Mexico and, and first ever World Lung Day was celebrated yesterday, that's 25th September 2017. The International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, the Union, and several other global lung health associations joined hands to make this happen. Lung health is indeed integral to sustainable development. Today, we have a widely respected expert who heads the scientific committee at the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union, and played a key role with other experts in shaping the scientific agenda of the forthcoming Congress next month. Stacy C. Stander, from Cape Town in South Africa. Ms. Stender is the chair of the Coordinating Committee of Scientific Activities of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union. Well, welcome Stacy on board. Before we learn the scientific highlights from our panelists, let me re request you all to keep sending us your questions, either by using the chat function or raising your virtual hand of the webinar too. Keep sending the question while Stacy is presenting. Well, let us now listen to Ms. Stacy C. Stender. It's over to you, Stacy. Thank you very much. Can you see my screen? I'm not in Durban at the moment, but I can hear the golden <laughs> voice. <laughs> I think I'll wait and, and, and confirm that the screen is shared, but thank you very much for the yes. introduction. Um, 
So yes, 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 Stacey, the screen is being, sc yeah, screen is being shared. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so I want to give you an overview of what we do as a CCSA before we jump into what is going to be presented in Guadalajara in two weeks. Uh, just all, also so that you know, this my my day job is working as senior technical advisor in HIV, tuberculosis, and infectious diseases for JAPIGO, which is an affiliate of Johns Hopkins University. And I just want to make a comment that everyone on the CCSA is a voluntary position. There are people that have day jobs, and, and we do this uh, on the side. So right. let me... So just to give you an overview of what the CCSA, everything needs an acronym in health. So CCSA, these are the objectives of, this, of the CCSA within the union and we oversee all scientific activities. Uh, there are two subgroups, just to highlight, there's the second subgroup are what are currently called program secretaries. There's a photo down there on the right from last year in Liverpool. They are the ones that actually formulate the annual conference program with a lot of input from peer reviewing and, uh, well, other experts that are members as well as not members of the union. Just to give um, an overview of the people who are involved and give their dear time to assist with ensuring that we have a, an excellent conference every year and that science is first and foremost the, the, the objective. You can see we have four main sections, adult and child lung health, for which TB is under that. We have HIV, tobacco control, and TB, which has the largest number of uh, members. And then under TB we have three subsections, which you can see bacteria and immunology, which is uh, all things lab, nursing and allied professional, and zoonotic TB. And then members of the Union Institute who are employees of the Union are also members. Here you can see subgroup two and these are the individuals, many very well known for their work and their research in their respective fields who uh, we all meet together in April to put together the program. One thing to really note with regards to Encuentro, we in Cape Town three years ago was the first ever community space which is open to people who do not register for the conference but they come and they have a, the ability to access information in, in the community space and now we have a representative from the, the union, uh, from the union as well as a volunteer. And then of course we have vice chairs and secretaries. I just want to give a heads up about that because they move up the following year to be the ones leading the conference. So this is a member-based organization, the union, and working groups are, are driven by the current interests. So just by looking at the types of working groups we have, you can see what is big and important in the, this field of the specific section. For you, so you can see on this slide within TB, we have several working groups. Uh, TB control in prisons with special populations. There are different interventions that are necessary. You can also see zoonotic TB, various various sub working groups and then adult and child lung health uh, asthma adult and child and lung health is is very much a catch-all it, it has everything from childhood TB to COPD asthma air pollution so there's there's quite a few diverse abstracts that are submitted for the scientific conference and then of course tobacco control and there's four, currently four working groups under tobacco control so now I will move to the conference uh, that will be taking place the 11th to the 14th in Guadalajara. So I wanted to give you an overview in terms of submissions and acceptances and we go, it's a very arduous process as you can imagine. They're for sessions which include workshops, postgraduate courses and symposia. There were 145 submissions and these are sessions that are reviewed by the CCSA and people within the Institute for to deter, determine whether or not it should be presented at the conference. And while a lot of the information, I think for you as media, you get to see the abstracts. I just want to highlight a lot of important information is also released in these, these sessions. And then for the abstracts, there were 1,681 submissions this year and we have, we have 502 peer reviewers and I do want to highlight we've worked very hard for the conference to be scientific based and we have a 
minimum of three and a maximum of five reviewers for every abstract to ensure that we are looking at the true science that, uh, that's important for the field. So with regards to sessions, here is the submission number. So just to let you know, we have things called postgraduate course and workshops, and they are held the day, the day of the opening ceremony, which is in the evening. And then symposia, and we, you can see we have multiple tracks. So when people submit their, their abstract or their session, it goes under a track. And uh, fortunately this year, there was significant increase in the number of basic science, drug development, immunology, and vaccines, just showing that the science of, of TB and lung health is moving forward more so than it was in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> Just a snapshot of the website, so I encourage you, it, it's very user-friendly and, and if there's a specific topic that piques your interest during this conversation, uh, to, you can do word search by anything. And I wanted to highlight some of the session samples uh, that are going to be presented. So these are the ones that I was saying that are reviewed by the CCSA. These are not the abstracts that are in the, the, the other media. So these are the some of the highlights, the first one being cross-cutting issues in advancing research and development of new tools to NTB, which is being presented by David Lewinson of Oregon Health Science University and Madhukar Pai from McGill. And just to highlight, this is about uh, the urgent need to, for TB R&D and a, a particular focus on vaccine drugs and diagnostics. The second one I wanted to highlight is the title of the session is Accelerating Research and Development of, of New TB Vaccines. Uh, and really nice to see that Blessy Kumar is co-chairing this. She's from uh, Affected Communities with Ann Ginsberg from ARIS. And, and the focus on this is to discuss how to streamline and accelerate TB vaccine research and development. The third one I wanted to highlight is from Bench to Bassinet, Scientific Innovations in the Fight Against Maternal Infant TB. Really stellar panel here, and Annika Hessling with Vanessa Ruzier from, Annika Hessling is from South Africa, and Vanessa Ruzier is from Haiti, talking about immunologic and physiologic changes during pregnancy and how this impacts uh, both diagnosis and treatment. And then finally, there's a workshop uh, a full day workshop which looks to be extremely interesting and it's about pharmacometrics and how to suppress the emergence of multidrug resistance and optimize existing regimens. So those are some of the, the, I just wanted to highlight the ones about basic science because we are, this is the, the important time in, in it's particularly in TB control is around having more uh, information and more interest in, in basic and clinical science. I'm not looking at this screen, so I don't know if I should stop and answer questions or just present first, but I'm just going to keep going unless someone hollers out. Um, and then looking at some of the other sessions that are going to present, be presented, there's one about quality of TB drugs, evidence, and policy action, because with, with TB control, there can be great science, great drugs, but if there's not proper implementation to the poorest, uh, it, it will never be eliminated as the goal is for 2030. Another one, childhood pneumonia, moving a little bit away from TB. Childhood pneumonia in the SDG era, innovations targeting diagnosis and care in low income settings. Some, some interesting things around uh, air pollution and pulse oximetry in that session. And then two more. Implementing novel drugs and regimens for treatment of MDR. This is a skills building workshop, which I think is, is extremely relevant. We now have some better tools to diagnose and manage MDR. And this is uh, the implementation is chaired by Vivian Cox of UCT and Edmund Ruta of USAID. And then finally, with regards to the sessions, there is another workshop, how to help TB patients to quit smoking, improve their outcomes, and reduce the risk of their family developing TB, which is coordinated by Cameron Sadiqi, who is a longstanding member of the union in, uh, of the UK, and Chris Bullen of the UN. So that was the sessions that I was saying. Now the abstract submissions, which are peer reviewed by, as I said, over 500 um, colleagues within the lung health field. 
And you can see uh, the number on the left is the number that were submitted. The number on the right is the number that were accepted. Uh, we have a scoring system, as I mentioned, three to five reviewers. So you can see throughout, um, there's a wide range, everything from human rights to patient-centered care to TB, tobacco control. Something I thought you might all be interested in terms of who submits what. There were often, India, due to the burden of disease and also the population of the country, interested in tuberculosis, that they have the largest number of abstracts submitted frequently. Uh, it's followed by USA, Nigeria, South Africa. Obviously, TB here for us is a major issue. And Mexico, often, depending on where a conference is held, which is very strategic, it will bring uh, interest to the specific topics. And then for sessions, you can see on the right, it's the USA, Switzerland, often that's because WHO organizes. They're not actually people from Switzerland, Mexico, the UK, and Netherlands. And just to kind of give you a, a snapshot of trends and how things are changing over time, uh, zoonotic TB, a, a, a significant in increase in submissions, still not a lot of submissions, but a, a lot compared to last year. Latent TB, because uh, one of the strategies to end TB is, is going to have to be to address beyond active TB disease, but also latent infection. And then drug-resistant TB care and treatment, which is, is always in the last three years has been the, the number one topic for the interested scientists that submit abstracts and sessions. And then human rights, we started a new track this year, human rights. Basic science, you can see increased tremendously, as did COPD, pneumonia, asthma, and other lung health in adults. I think the union has traditionally been seen as the holder of TB, all things TB at the conference, but there's definitely more and more interest with, with chronic lung disease and other lung issues as, as time wears on. And then largest increases by country, you know, just as a snapshot, Uzbekistan, kind of an interesting element. And then Peru, again, because we're in the region, I think there's more submissions. Also something I thought you, as the media, you might be interested in seeing the submission versus acceptance rate for, for conference abstracts. So you can see it to date, since the beginning, Cape Town in 2015 was the largest number of submissions. Again, TB is a major issue in this country. Uh, unfortunately, from 2012 and, and earlier, I don't have the, the accepted rate. But you can see that we're accepting about 50%. This year was a little over 50%. Of, of abstracts, and this is abstracts, not sessions. And I just wanted to highlight to you, we have, we started a student late breaker session just two years ago. Um, it's with the intention of engaging more young people currently pursuing research, whether it's implementation science or basic science or clinical science, to become more involved in, in TB and lung health. And so, and this year we're fortunate enough to have uh, f support but from JATA, the Japanese um, TB Association, to assist with getting those students to be able to present. And then we have HIV, TB, and other co-infections, as well as the TB Union CDC uh, late breaker sessions. All three of those are on Friday, and they're definitely, if any of you are traveling to Guadalajara, they are sessions not to miss, because it, it is sort of the best science at the conference. And then the last thing I just wanted to highlight is we do have some awards that, that the CCSA oversees the first four and then the board of the union oversees the second, the union medal and the honorary membership, but also recognizing that these are people who are recognized for their contribution to both science and public health implementation in TB and lung health. And the Stephen Law and TB HIV Research Leadership Prize is something new, and it's in uh, honor of Stephen Law, who passed away last year and was a real leader in TB and HIV research. That's it for my slideshow, and I'm happy to take questions. And I'm sorry if that took longer than anticipated. No, thank you very much indeed, uh, Ms. Stacy C. Stender, from, of course, from the mother city, Cape Town in South Africa. Obviously, she, she is the chair of the coordinating committee of scientific activities of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union. Well, you heard it all from uh, Stacy. Well, well, that brings us to the end of the expert, expert presentation. Uh, let me remind all journalists and other participants in this webinar 
as well as those who are watching this webinar stream on YouTube or will listen to this podcast later. Please note, in the case of the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health, as well as with most scientific or medical conferences, all conference abstracts are released to media under a strict embargo policy. For more details, check out www.worldlunghealth.org. Now, let's begin the open session. Participants, please keep sending your questions using chat function or raise your virtual hand on the webinar screen. Open session begins right now. Thank you, Shubhai. <clears throat> and thank you, Stacey. Uh, there are some questions which I have streamed in already. Uh, it's a difficult to choose. Let's go one by one. And uh, one question comes from Bangladesh from Zafar, and he's asking about zoonotic to TB. You, uh, it's, uh, he, so his question is that please share more why it is important from public health point of view. Okay, great. I didn't realize I haven't <laughs> muted myself. Yeah. Um, okay. So, with regard, especially in a region where the conference is being held, zoonotic TB is, uh, as we try to move towards elimination, it is going to be the last mile. Uh, in, in countries such as uh, most of, of sub-Saharan Africa and, and much of Asia, zoonotic TB can contribute a large amount to actual TB disease. Drugs that are utilized are different for treatment, so uh, you have to have proper diagnostics to, to ensure which uh, form of tuberculosis Mycobacterium, I'm sorry, which form of mycobacterium the, the person may have if they're symptomatic. So, and in Mexico and, and in many countries, zoonotic disease in general is, is very much an issue given the close proximity that humans live with animals. I hope I answered your question. It was a, a bit vague. It's not my area of expertise, but it is a very big priority of the union, and there's actually going to be a launch of the zoonotic uh, roadmap during the conference. I apologize, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but it will it will be one of the media releases. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, Stacey. And uh, Zafar, I would also like to add that in Liverpool, the last year conference, uh, zoonotic TB was also in a major spotlight. So, so you've raised an important issue, and we do hope that work goes forward on this. Uh, there, please keep sending the questions, and you can also raise your virtual hand. You will see it on your uh, on your device, which you are using to log in this on this webinar. Uh, Stacy, the next question for you, which has come from Kashmir, uh, from a journalist Anuradha, and she has asked that. Uh, will any important tuberculosis report be released, like global TB report of the WHO or any other report from the union? What is latest science on tuberculosis in Guadalajara next month? Okay, great. I mean, that's a great question. There are no formal publications being released, but there's quite substantial amount of basic and clinical science. As I, I mentioned on the presentation that, that are coming out, that are being presented at this conference, so one of the really amazing things that's coming up more and more is the use of biomarkers for, for detection, not uh, of disease, but also for the efficacy of drug. Um, there's one session on Friday on the molecular bacterial load assay as a marker for treatment response late during treatment. So that's one session to really keep your eye on. There will, I believe they are invited to the press conference. And then the, this whole, there's a one on Thursday as an, a, at 10.30 in Hall 5 on, on plasma MTB cell wall metabolites and identifying patients with MDR TB. So biomarkers I think are big in, in, at the conference this year as is different ways for diagnosis. There's one session on non-invasive sampling, which I, you know, not knowing everyone on the call, your your level of understanding of tuberculosis, but the mainstay of diagnosis is looking at sputum, and it's very difficult for a person who who has limited symptoms or even people who are coughing to produce sputum and not spit, and so there's there's one on non-invasive sampling for molecular diagnosis of TB. 
So that would be the, the holy grail for the TB community would be to have a way to diagnose that doesn't rely on sputum. Uh, you know, there's urine lamb, which is, uh, it, it only works very well in severely immunocompromised patients living with HIV. But, you know, if you think about a community health worker at a village level, if they could just have a, a urine dipstick and you could say you have TB or you don't, that's the first step of reaching the 390s of, of, of identifying people living with TB and, and successfully treating them. And then uh, there's also the the use of technology. Is is there are several sessions that across all the different tracks that I showed you around the use of technology for drug supply management for for various things. But there is one that's being presented as an ab oral abstract um, on Thursday in Hall 11 at 4 p.m. and it's on wirelessly observed therapy is accurate and confirms more mycobacterial tuberculosis medication doses than directly observed therapy. So again, if you are historically aware of TB treatment, directly observed therapy or DOT was the mainstay for many years and uh, we're, it's definitely not the wave of the future. So using technology is, is something that is, is, has been across many. I also wanted to highlight, while I'm still talking quickly, um, some of the highest scoring abstracts um, among all of them, just to give you the titles so you can see what the trend is currently and, and, and as reviewed by peers. Um, improved treatment outcomes in HIV positive adolescents with TB compared to adults in Kenya. This is, uh, you know, you could, it's, it's HIV, it's, it's pediatrics, it's many things, but it's going to be a very interesting presentation, uh, oral presentation in Hall 11 on the 13th. Uh, another one is on drug-resistant TB treatment failure, mutations associated with bedaquiline, which, you know, fortunately last year and the year before, a lot of the news around TB was that there were, there are better drugs, less, less side effects, inject non-injectable drugs becoming more available for the treatment of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis and this is looking at uh, resistance to that which ends up to be extremely drug resistant and that's I mean I don't know if I need to tell you the halls you can look these up if you if you are interested another in, uh, highest scoring is on childhood multi-drug resistant TB in the European Union uh, another one on descriptive analysis of PEPFAR's TB HIV portfolio, TB cases with known HIV status, and TB HIV co-infected on ART in East and Southern Africa. Just a couple more. I'm just giving you a few of the highest. Patient education versus clinician mentoring for increased INH therapy, isonized and preventive therapy uptake, which, you know, as I mentioned uh, earlier, in order to end TB, treatment of latent TB is, is going to have to be standard and there's a real challenge even among uh, people at really at high risk for for having TB infection turn to disease that taking IPT is not is there, there there's not a lot of successful solutions as of yet among the HIV community and then finally there's one on the burden of TB from 1990 to 2016 so we're looking at a, a nearly 20 year span Finding findings from the Global Burden of Disease Study, which uh, is a collaboration of researchers, and I, that will be a, a, a really interesting presentation. So, sorry to keep talking, but that next question. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Stacy. That was really very, very helpful, and I'm sure participants also will appreciate that. Uh, very related is a comment coming from Snigdha Basu. She is a journalist with NDTV in India, and she is a special correspondent. And she has asked that, can we please receive the embargoed versions prior to the conference? This will help those who are unable to attend, and uh, they can plan their stories. So, uh, will you like to say so, something, or probably? <laughs> Yes. That's not yeah. a thing I can answer. I think you, you have to contact Joe at the union directly. I, I am not, as I said, I'm not even a union staff member. I don't have such, such authority. So you'll have to contact the, the communications at the union. Right. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. So, Snigda, the uh, Joe Waters uh, email address will be on the screen very soon. Uh, when you see the embargo slide, you will you have it. I think it's jwaters at theunion.org. Uh, so, uh, moving on, uh, we, well, 
there is a question on will there be a parliamentary forum in Guadalajara like uh, which happened in previous conferences? So there is so going to be a, yeah. a ministerial yeah. after the first, uh, the, we're on the I, I didn't mention the plenaries. There's so much to talk about. As you can imagine, a, a four-day conference has a lot of activities. The first plenary is on uh, uh, the road to the high-level meeting, and uh, Luchika Dichu from StopDB Partnership is co-chairing with Eric Boosby, who is a UN envoy for TBA TV and former ambassador to PEPFAR. So they they will be co-chairing, and, and it'll be the discussion around the high-level meeting coming up. And the immediately following in that room, there will be a ministerial panel. It, you know, given the location, I think logistics, the it's not going to be as as large of a delegation as it has been in past, particularly in Cape Town and in Liverpool. But there, there, there is continuous engagement by the union to ensure political buy-in. Okay, there is another question from Thilusini Govinda from South Africa, and uh, Thilusini asks on ad, uh, about adherence support for MDRTB and palliative care for uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis, and uh, will this be featured in this conference? Yes, absolutely. Um, this is the type of topic that is very much covered by the nursing and allied professionals. Uh, adherence support training of both healthcare providers and uh, patients themselves to be peer educators and supporters for their for their uh, their peers and so yes there will be and there there is always every year a booth where educational materials are shared patient education and provider education and it's 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 run by the nursing and allied professional section and it, it will be there in the uh, the I believe the conference not the conference hall where, where people display material. Sorry, I don't know the formal name for it. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Stacey. Well, uh, there's another question. Uh, Dr. Papu Sarma, Dr. P.S. Sarma, you have your hand raised. So you need to self uh, unmute yourself. You are self muted. Dr. Sarma. All right. Okay, so Dr. Sarma is the key, one of the key organizers of the next national conference on tuberculosis and chest diseases in India. And uh, he has said that the abstract submission deadline probably is towards the end of this month and is sending the best greetings for, for the Guadalajara conference. So thank you, Dr. Sarma. Uh, all Great. right, so participants, please keep sending in your questions. Uh, you can raise your virtual hand you will see it on your screen or you can type in your question as well. Uh, there's a question on tobacco smoking cessation. Uh, and uh, the question is that uh, the cessation rates are pretty low. So is there any new evidence uh, which will be presented at this conference? Ha! I wish I knew. That is not my area of expertise, even though I do oversee all areas of the, of the, of the union. There are many oral abstract sessions as well as, I believe, two I presented at their symposia. And anything on tobacco cessation will, will definitely be presented. If you look, it, as I had mentioned, if you want to specifically look at the program, you can search, search by tobacco cessation and you'll find any, any of the sessions specific to that topic. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, another interesting question is coming comes from Pauline in Kenya. She is saying that uh, earlier this week, uh, probably the Kenyan Kenyan government has launched uh, has a, has agreed upon including urine test for tuberculosis and also using gene expert for uh, the direction of tuberculosis as well as HIV. So she wanted to know more information uh, on uh, about these tests. Okay. And about so using the, gene expert for TBHIV both. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So, it, it, and that's amazing. That's uh, that's fantastic. Kenya is, is often in the lead of, of of innovation. So essentially, this gene expert, which is made by Cepheid, it's a molecular diagnostic that looks at the DNA of or RNA of whatever organism you're trying to detect. So essentially, the platform can detect multiple diseases. It's not one disease specific. So 
it's been it's been procured and distributed widely, largely under PEPFAR and global fund programs to detect tuberculosis in the sputum. There have been quite a few studies using other um, tissues such as uh, CSS, uh, cerebral spinal fluid, and and there's been trying with blood and other things, but it's really most validated for sputum. So that same machine that runs a uh, molecular test to see if TB is present in the sputum can also be used with a different cartridge to, to for viral load, so to see presence, the, the quantification of the amount of virus in a person's blood sample, but it can also do a, a qualitative in, in a child, early infant diagnosis, that the same machine, which is, you know, procurement and utilization of laboratory technologies is, is a large problem in, in under-resourced settings, and so it's, 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 Multi, it's it's going to force integration of the TB and HIV programs. Now, with regards to urinary LAM, as I mentioned, this is for severely immunocompromised individuals. So, in in HIV, if someone has a CD4 count of less than 100, it's essentially you take a urine in the presence of these biomarkers, the the which are part of the cell. That it will be positive, and it, this this sensitivity is not what we would want, and that's the problem with with a lot of laboratory tests. But the specific specificity is there. So if the person actually has TB, you can be quite sure that they do, and you can start them immediately on TB treatment. Okay, thank you. There's another uh, question coming in from Geeta, and uh, she's asking about. It is interesting to see submissions on human rights, but numbers are small despite growing call uh, positioning tuberculosis as a human rights issue. Any insights? So that's a very good point. I think we're constantly struggling as the CCSA, really having a good way to ensure engagement of all the relevant stakeholders. And um, the, the having 23 tracks is, might not be the way when you look at a drop down menu like where do where does this fit does it go on tv does it go on hiv does it go on human rights does it go cuz cuz everything has is is complex and can fit in multiple boxes so i think because it was new this year many people were not expecting it so they did not write uh, an abstract towards it i do want to highlight though that a lot of the things that might be addressed in a the scientific area, right, where you have to register for the conference and you participate. It's, it's not the same as Encuentro this year, which is the community speed, where a lot of human, there's many sessions. It's also online on the, on the program. There's, there's multiple, multiple sessions that are addressing uh, human rights. Yeah. Thank you, Stacey. Thanks. Uh, probably we can go now to Dr. Archana Trivedi. Uh, she would like to share and participants in the meantime, please keep sending us your questions or raise your virtual hand and we will take you the online then. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Archana Trivedi. Yeah, uh, basically uh, the session which uh, I was talking about, uh, uh, which uh, will be there at the community space, uh, it's on what works, engaging minds, uh, mind space of the community over reaching them an efficient and effective way to end TB by 2025 in India. Uh, we are planning to have a fishbowl discussion which will be participatory where we would like to invite everybody to uh, uh, give their suggestions and how we can actually uh, uh, work upon and uh, develop some modality which can be very efficient and effective uh, to reach our goal also. Because when we think about uh, various means which are there, we are able to reach the masses. But are we able to reach the mind space of the masses like? Where are we lagging like? Are there any research which has been done and what works and what doesn't work like? So I would want everybody to be part of it and whosoever is there in the conference, I would like to invite uh, all the uh, delegates and so, so that we can uh, think about something which can really work and which can make the change, especially to change the behavior of the community. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Arjuna. So, uh, yeah, let's, and uh, CNS will be there and Godalahara, and we will please do watch our site and the uh, reports which are coming in. Stacy, moving on, uh, 
there is another question coming in which is interesting it says that it's encouraging to see that significant numbers of scientific research papers submitted came from tb high burden countries in asia and africa apart from us uh, this is indeed good did you see more papers from the latin american nations since the conference is being held there and uh, yeah and th th this comes from saad rais thank you yes i mean not at the level of of some of the other areas but there were significantly more abstracts submitted abstracts and symposia both from central and south america than than in the past for example i think one of you know this is the problem with an international conference it's it, the location and so often people submit if it's feasible for them to travel but yes there were quite a few and specifically from mexico so of course we really try to make sure that the local uh, hosting country has adequate space to engage their and, and very in the in heart of uh, engaging local communities which the first one was in Cape Town with the Ambizo and now this year's the Encuentro it's ensuring that people in the in Guadalajara themselves are engaged to learn more and and so this year I think there is more balance with tobacco control and other lung health uh, and just like in Liverpool last year there was quite a bit on on air quality because the, the issues are are more relevant to, to where the conference is held. Yeah. Thank you Stacey. There's a, another question from Dr. Bhargo Prasad from KIMS in uh, Andhra Pradesh, India and he has asked what is recent treatment for atypical microbacterium tuberculosis? Oh. You're getting very, very detailed. I cannot, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it's a fluoroquinolone and other things, but I do not know. So I can, if you, if it's a, something of real interest, Paula Fujiwara, the scientific director uh, involved in zoonotic, it can very much provide insight. So if you contact Joe, the media person, she'll get you in touch with the right person within the union. Right. Thank you. And uh, we will definitely pass on the contacts of Paula as well. Thanks a lot, Stacey. The, another, uh, there are two, the few questions actually, I'm trying to put them all in one and more are, are on tuberculosis and HIV. Like what is new in TBHIV? What is, what is the latest approach in tackling tuberculosis and HIV? Ashok Ramsaru, former ACBC journalist has also asked about this, that is there any new science or evidence in this, uh, which will be here at this conference, presented at, at this conference on tuberculosis and HIV uh, co-infection. And there is another stream of questions which are on tuberculosis and other NCDs. So I will come to that later on. So TB and HIV, okay. anything new? Okay. Yeah, right. I think a, a, a lot of, because as you imagine, the International AIDS Society has, has a, a conference every year as well. So a lot of information is presented where, there as well as here. I, I think some of the new it's about implementation. I think we have great tools and there are several really good sessions on how to effectively utilize them uh, around adherence as well as around diagnostics. As I mentioned describing the gene expert, the fact that you can use the same machine to diagnose both, uh, that, that was only WHO, the HIV viral load uh, cartridge for expert was only pre-qualified last year by WHO. So I think there is real movement because as with HIV, with the third 90 being viral suppression, uh, you have to be able to measure that to be able to say whether or not someone is virally suppressed. And there are huge obstacles to laboratory diagnosis for TB and both HIV, and the obstacles are similar yet different. And having the ability to test closer to where patients live and receive care is, is a major uh, win, I think, in the, in the co-management of the diseases. And, and there, there are several sessions. Uh, I believe there's two oral abstract sessions and one symposia that will address largely implementation. Obviously, with regards to HIV treatment, there's a lot happening and dolutegravir is now recommended as first line, so which will have impact on TB co-management so, and other things. I mean, I could go, this is my field of expertise, so I'll stop there because I could go on and on, and on about that. Yeah, thank you, Stacey. Uh, another question is from Manoj Toshniwal. Mano, uh, Manoj, would you like to ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, 
uh, in the modern era of information technology, will it be possible in near future that people can participate in Okay, uh, probably, yeah, we are losing uh, you, Manoj. But anyways, Manoj, since you have typed in a question, I will just read it out. In the modern era of information technology, will it be possible in near future to make the conference live and can be attended remotely? So basically, probably there should be live streaming or uh, you know using IT for it to increase participation. That's what he's asking about. Yeah. So I am not. I know that we do have the plenaries are. Filmed. I don't know if it's live, but I think it is. Um, yeah. And and the, the rooms where whereby the plenaries are held, so the sessions that are held in that same large room, I believe, are also streamed live. That is something I would yeah. say we need to push over to our conference secretary. I apologize, I don't know. I don't deal with the logistics, but our conference secretariat could certainly answer. Right. Right. Thank you, Stacy. And probably you should also check out the website. Uh, pre we ha do have seen uh, sessions being webcasted, or and also do contact Joe Waters, J W Waters at theunion.org, and our email ID will be on the embargo screen, which will be right after this session in just next few minutes. So uh, thanks a lot for raising that question, Manoj. And uh, on to, on uh, TV and NCDs, uh, there, there there are streams on like what new ways to work together. Uh, will be there on tuberculosis and diabetes. People have said uh, on one comment has come in that although there is more evidence on linkages between tuberculosis, diabetes, and tobacco use, uh, but these are different programs and different medical expertises which are dealing with those. So, uh, so probably what more evidence is coming on collaborative activities and more maybe some operate is will there be more operational research on on uh, linkages and collaborative activities probably. So uh, that, those are very good questions, and this is something I should have mentioned in the very beginning because the uh, the opening press conference is specific to exactly that diabetes and, and tuberculosis, and, and it's uh, an abstract that was submitted that's on the glycemic control and the prevalence of latent TB infection, a population-based study. So that is very much you know important element, especially in countries uh, that have lower incidence of HIV. You know, I live in a world where where the highest risk for TB is HIV, but in settings such as Mexico and India, the highest risk is other diseases be that are more prevalent than HIV. So diabetes co-infection is, uh, and the risk for TB infection, which obviously you have to be infected to eventually lead to disease, that's going to be at the 16.30 to 17.45 on Wednesday press conference. And just to let you know, uh, I did speak with the Joe and, and others that the press program will be available online late today or tomorrow. So you'll be able to see what the what exact uh, topics are going to be released at, at what time. The other thing I wanted to mention this thing about collaboration, and it's totally true, everyone has their feet thumbs between TB, HIV, tobacco, any technical area. But that's that was one of the elements of the development of the working group within t it's, it falls under tobacco control, but as you can imagine, uh, it could be under any of the sections, but it's about TB, HIV, and tobacco, and that's one of their expected outputs is to, to help design and implement uh, successful programs. Yeah, thank you, Stacey. Participants, please keep sending your questions. Raise a virtual hand. There are very few minutes left. Uh, another comment has come in from Peter Uviti from Kenya. And uh, it's a long comment, but it's an important one. And that is about how people from developing countries uh, face problems in getting their visa. So he has written that uh, about UCAP. And uh, there was some delay in the last year conference. And uh, so, so some members were unable to get the visa sorted out in time and again Mexican government needs original invitation letter for visa which makes it make is making it difficult for, as the deadline has passed uh, so, uh, so so this is a more of a comment probably and we did, and it's always a challenge bringing people from different parts of the world to a conference uh, given the visa realities yeah. and the realities we live in yeah it's true and you know just so that everyone knows that when selecting a conference, um, th that is taken into consideration, the ease and the relationship with the government to be able to facilitate uh, visas. You know, no place in the world is perfect for other places in the world, as you said. So, you know, we try our best, and every year this comes up, and we, and we, and there's, 
massive efforts undertaken by the secretary to try to facilitate. Okay. Yeah. So participants, please keep sending a question. We have uh, Stacy's time. Few more minutes left. Uh, so if there isn't, or raise your virtual hand. This is your moment. <laughs> All right, we don't see any more questions streaming in. Great, no so let me also way. to yep. highlight the conference program can be found at www.worldlonghealth.org to see the program page. And then if you have any questions or queries, you know, whether it's logistical, you can always email the conference secretariat at Guadalajara, you'll have to Google how to spell that, 2017 all one word at the union.org. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. And uh, again, let me remind all journalists and other participants in this webinar, as well as those who are, who are or who will be watching this webinar streamed on YouTube or listen to podcasts later, please note in the case of this conference, the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health, as with most scientific or medical conferences, all conference abstracts are released to media under a strict embargo policy. For further details on the scientific content, please contact Joe Waters of the communications team at the union. Her email is jwaters at the union.org. It is also on your screen right now. Uh, you will also see on your screen an important URL. Uh, th that is for more information on the embargo, please. So, uh, and you can also contact Joe Waters for the communication related uh, concerns or discussions which we had in this webinar. So thanks a lot to every participant. Thanks a lot, Stacey. Thank you. And thanks a lot, Ashok Ramsarup, for uh, steering the webinar. And uh, we do look forward to this conference uh, in Guadalajara. Thank you to the union. And thanks a lot. And stay tuned because a lot of reports and updates will be coming in in the lead up to Guadalajara and from on site as well. Thank you. Yes. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Bye-bye.